Hello and welcome to this edition of Alabama Adventures. Again tonight we go to our ghost files and pull out another haunted house. So without any further ado, let's get on to the tale of this particular haunted house. What I did uh, one afternoon this week, I ran over there and uh, made a few pictures of the house. I was going to do a video, but uh, when I pulled over on the side of the road, and of course I've got Alabama Bigfoot Society written on the side of my Jeep, uh, everybody and his brother had to stop and want to know if I'd seen a Bigfoot there or what was going on. So I just didn't do any uh, videoing. Uh, I just made some quick pictures of the house, and we'll run those pictures while I'm telling you this uh, a story on this haunted house. A house that has a haunted tale with it is located just outside of town and in the community of Pleasant Hill. The original owners, long since deceased, were very prominent people in the community in those days. Not long after their deaths, the house was rented and the new tenants soon began hearing footsteps roaming the halls of the old house. This happened usually late at night when everyone was supposed to be in bed. Doors and cabinets could be heard opening and closing by themselves. Even the old porch swing could be heard swinging by itself on the front porch on windless nights. After living there for only a short time, this family decided it would be much better for their nerves if they just moved away. Now the uh, following account that I'm fixing to tell you is the first uh, report that I received myself on the house. What I just told you was uh, just rumors and things that you heard around town about the old house over the years. But now this is the uh, first report that I received on this house from a man that I know uh, very well. It was not long after the departure of this family that a man going by the farmhouse one night in his truck and on his way to work reported to me what he thought at the time were three people sitting on the front porch. They were sitting in chairs and one was swinging slowly back and forth in the old porch swing. Knowing the house was unoccupied and no one should be there, he stopped and backed up for a better look, thinking that it could possibly be vandals or someone up to no good. As he backed up, he turned his headlights so they would illuminate the front porch. Nothing or no one was there, but the old swing continued to slowly swing by itself. Maybe it was ghosts, he thought to himself, joking. It was only a few weeks later that two other witnesses joyriding one night also reported a ghostly sighting at the old house. In this sighting, several figures were seen standing on the front porch, some standing, some seated, and two were in the swing this time. The people stopped in the road looking, trying to identify who all that it was sitting and standing on the porch and what they might be up to. As the people in the car watched the people on the porch, it seemed the people on the porch were also watching them at the same time. Then one of the people in the car remarked that the people on the porch looked kind of fuzzy and appeared transparent. They watched the specters for about 30 more seconds in the moonlight. Then to their surprise, the figures on the porch began to slowly fade away. In a few seconds, they'd all vanished before their eyes. The riders sped off quickly, not wanting to investigate any further. Not long afterwards came a third sight. This time, as the witness came close and came inside of the house, he too noticed several figures on the front porch. With his foot on the brake and moving very slowly, he strained his eyes to see if he could recognize anyone. But again, the specters looked blurry to him. Turning his attention to the road again and giving the truck a little gas to go on, through the windshield he saw another figure standing in the middle of the road directly in front of his truck. With reflexes, he hit his brake and braced himself for an impact while the person in the road was only inches from his front bumper when he saw them. He could tell this figure was that of a woman. She had long flowing blonde hair and a dress that reminded him of the 1930s. She seemed to glow slightly and he could see through her. After he thought about it a little while, 
Maybe the dress wasn't exactly a dress. Maybe it was a white gown that glowed. Or then he thought it could possibly be a funeral shroud as they often buried women in shrouds in those days, in uh, the 1920s and 30s. To his horror, it looked to him as he hit the woman and she fell to the pavement out of his sight and as if she had perhaps fallen under the truck. He turned off his truck quickly and jumped from the cab. He was looking furiously for the semi-transparent woman. She was nowhere to be found, neither in front of, under, or behind the truck. A quick glance toward the porch and nothing was there as well. Over the years, there have been several reports of ghosts on the porch, as well as two reports of the girl in the road. Each time, the motorist hits the glowing, transparent woman who seems destined to never be able to complete her journey safely to the front porch. Now, that was uh, some reports that I received and had on file uh, for several years. Let me tell you, uh, uh, the most recent uh, a couple of sightings over there. A family moved in over there one time and they too began hearing footsteps and when they would go to bed at night uh, they began hearing dishes rattle in the uh, cabinet in the, the kitchen. One night uh, they heard uh, the refrigerator door continuously open and close, open and close because it was kind of slammed hard and the uh, items inside the refrigerator would sometimes rattle, like the eggs and uh, what glass uh, jars or something they had in there. This happened uh, pretty much all night one night. A few nights later, they heard cabinet doors in the kitchen once again being slammed and heard dishes uh, like they were being bumped up against each other. You know what kind of little sound that makes when uh, you put a glass up in the cabinet and it hits and it touches another glass, it makes a little dinging sound. They heard this all night. Her husband, the, the lady's husband, finally got up and went to the kitchen and didn't find anything. Uh, the doors were all closed and uh, he didn't see anything out of place. However, the next morning when they got up and uh, I believe the husband went to the uh, bathroom to start getting ready for work and his wife went into the kitchen. They had two uh, small children at the time there and she was gonna prepare breakfast before uh, school time and uh, work time. And when she walked into the kitchen, she screamed and her husband came running in. And when he came in, all the dishes had been glasses and plates and saucers and cups and that type of stuff. All had been taken out of the cabinet and were all sitting on the counter and on the kitchen table in there. So anyway, they kept staying there though, even after this happened. Then it just seemed to get worse as far as the footsteps and the uh, clatter of the dishes. Uh, doors began slamming, hallway doors, bedroom doors, when there wasn't any air being able to get into the house. The windows were closed, doors were closed. It was like winter time, so uh, the, the windows or anything wasn't open so the wind could blow them. But it just got worse and worse, so they decided that they would move. Then my final report on it was a lady and her husband, and she had some children also, and they moved into the house, and the very first night they began hearing sounds like the footsteps. Uh, the rattling dishes and that type of stuff, but they tried not to pay it any attention. Then a night or two later, they heard what sounded like the silverware drawer being opened and closed, and you could hear the silverware jingling around in there as if somebody was going through the knives and forks and spoons hunting something. You know how that sound is whenever you're looking for a particular fork or knife that you want to use and uh, you're having to dig through the uh, other silverware that's in the drawer. They heard this one night, but they didn't get out of bed for some reason. They just said they just kept laying there. They just thought it was the ghost in there and didn't pay any attention to it much. But the next morning, when this man and uh, wife got up uh, and uh, walked into the kitchen, I think they both went into the kitchen at the same time because they had heard uh, reports on this house that it was haunted and the dishes did rattle and sometimes were moved. And uh, when they went in the uh, kitchen that morning, Laying on the uh, uh, kitchen table was every knife that was in the drawer, like butcher knives and steak knives, uh, other type knives that you use like for peeling and that type of stuff. She said they were just lined right in the middle of the uh, kitchen table, just lined up perfectly and spaced evenly, pretty much apart. So 
that was their last day there. And uh, that's about the last report that I've had off of this house because nobody's uh, rented the house in several years now. I do believe it has been turned into a uh, hunting club over there, but uh, nobody's living in the house right now. But anyway, we have several haunted houses around and uh, we would like to hear some of your stories about haunted houses and hauntings that you may have in uh, your area. If you like this tonight, and I hope you did, I ask you to give us a like. And uh, if you like what we're doing down here with our uh, ghost investigations and Bigfoot and uh, other type stuff, I ask you to subscribe to the channel. I would like to, as I always do, say hello to my granddaughter Madison and wish her a happy Halloween. Also wish her a happy birthday uh, this month. Uh, she, uh, she has a birthday this month. So uh, she, she'll be 12 years old and uh, thinking about her a lot around her birthday. And I uh, also want you to know that the Alabama Bigfoot Society is run completely out of pocket. With all that being said, I guess we'll be looking for you next time on the next Alabama Adventure.